So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, first of all, thank you to Alibaba for inviting me to speak today. I'm going to do three things in the next few minutes. I'm going to try and give you a little bit of a flavor of how technology uh, is involved in some of those great experiences you saw in the video before. I'm going to talk a little bit about the way I see the technology model for the Olympics developing in the future. And in particular, I'm going to talk about how the Alibaba partnership is going to help us do that. But before I dive in to any of those things, there's just a little bit of introduction I need to make. Uh, I, I particularly need to mention sort of the different organizations involved. I work for the IOC, the International Olympic Committee. We're the governing body for the Olympic movement, but there are other organizations within that movement that are also very important, in particular, the organizing committees in each city that puts on the games. And at the moment, for example, you've got organizing committees in uh, Pyeongchang in Korea, in Tokyo in Japan, and of course in uh, Beijing for 2022. And I want to also mention the Olympic Channel, which launched a year ago. Think of it as a digital startup, which is aimed at increasing Olympic engagement, particularly with young people, between editions of the Olympic Games. And that's an important initiative that I'll come back to later as I talk about how Alibaba are going to help us. So I think the IOC, what we're all about and what the Olympic movement is all about is about making people's lives better through sport. And it's great to have a partner like Alibaba that's going to help us do that. It's particularly great, I think, from a technology point of view, because two things we need to work on is first, our digital engagement with our target audiences and our exploitation of data in support of that. And second, we need to make the delivery model for the games, not least the technology delivery model for the games, much more sustainable. And I'm going to come back to that as I talk. If we change the model, when we change the model, I think that will raise the bar on Olympic delivery and on sports delivery generally in terms of the quality of the engagement that we're able to make with people during and between the Olympic Games. Because you see, the Olympics is a global stage like no other. We showcase the best performances of the best athletes on the planet and everybody watches. Not everybody goes to an event, but a lot of people see what's happening. And in fact, what we're all about in the Olympics is enabling and then showcasing that athletic performance, whatever kind of sport it is that we're talking about. So where does technology fit into that? Well, in a number of ways. The schematic I've just put up, which I'm not going to talk you through in detail, just shows you how everything starts, as you'd expect, with the athletic performance in the venue. For instance, I, I was responsible for technology at London 2012. As it happens, the first gold medal uh, for London 2012 was by Yi Se Lang, uh, who was uh, one of your shooters, 10 meters air rifle, that was the first gold. Technology is involved, first of all, to measure that performance. Where did the bullets go? Second, to make that performance visible to people in the venue and via TV graphics to people back home. And that's just within shooting. 
but at the same time you have other events in other sports going on. Um, for example, uh, and there's a lot of data involved. For example, um, Usain Bolt won the 100 meters in London in um, 9.63 seconds. That was an Olympic record because the previous Olympic record was at the bird's nest in Beijing in 9.69. But it wasn't a world record because actually Usain Bolt beat the world record at the Bol World Athletics Championships in Berlin in 2009 in 9.5 seconds. The technology here, the data here, needs to know all that to be able to put that information up for the benefit of the spectators, for the commentators, um, and the other consumers of this information. And across all the sports, this data has been driven out to be used on the Games Time website for the organizing committee, to be used by press agencies, to be used by the broadcasters. And this is going on all of the time during the period of the Olympic Games. But the thing to know, the thing to know is that this model, the model you see behind you, effectively gets reinvented for every edition of the Olympic Games in each new city. There are some common components, but there's a lot of work goes on to re-implement. You can see where I'm going. And if I look at the rest of technology that an organizing committee has to implement, there's a bunch of stuff under enterprise systems and IT uh, to help the organizing committee run itself, to manage its accounts, to provide office services, to manage transport the games, issues during the games, medical encounters during the games, the management of the radio spectrum during the games. There's a bunch of technology um, required to um, have a very scalable website that can deal with the volumes at games time, one of the most visited websites on the planet normally, and usually the level of cyber attacks that occur at the same time. Again, massive amounts of technology used for a short time and then re-implemented elsewhere. Results technology I've talked about. There are some technologies that you would always want to implement locally. On the, on the left there, um, venue technology, you know, uh, scoreboards, video boards, equipment to help the judges do video adjudication of an event, um, equipment to support sports presentation, PA technology, that will always be local in the sporting venue. And we will always need, I think, a telecommunications network and uh, a radio network to support the operational games. But those middle blocks, why could they not be done on a centralized and more sustainable manner from each edition of the games? And if you look at it from the point of view of scale, we're talking about a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that gets used for quite a short time to deliver a great result. But it's a lot of stuff, and I think there are simpler now, simpler and better ways to attack this challenge. So, where does Alibaba fit in? Well, I think by working effectively with the Alibaba cloud, we can help manage that scale. We have here the perfect cloud um, application. It's, it's peaky and it's predictable. Use cloud is ideal for managing those high transaction volumes for a short time. But it's not just that. By using the cloud, we can um, make the games much more sustainable by virtue of implementing once and then use wherever we need to. And that's across a range of applications that the organizing committee might need. And in addition, in the sort of longer term, the correct implementation cloud should make it possible to deliver editions of the games in places that would currently find putting the games on very hard. So those three things are three of the things that I most want Alibaba to work with us on over the next few years. And uh, it's fair to say the relationship is still at its fairly early stages, even though I'm uh, becoming proficient in uh, ding talk. But that's the kind of agenda that's ongoing. And it's not just about the cloud. We've got 
other innovation to do. What you can see happening is that we will be collecting much more data about what's going on on the field of play, about the athlete's uh, performance, about some of the forces involved, depending on the, on the event we're talking about. There's lots of opportunities to do things with that data, maybe as feedback for the athletes or as benefit to, um, to fans who are interested in the detail of the event, the sort of telemetry of it. There are opportunities, I think, to use uh, cognitive computing or AI, if you prefer, to um, drive value out of that data. And actually, I think there are opportunities to use uh, intelligent agents in various aspects of organizing the games. Uh, virtual reality, we're already beginning to play with. So a bunch of innovations you can see um, that will help us reduce the cost and complexity of the games, enhance the audience experience, and get us deeper engagement with our fan base. That's what we're trying to do. And Alibaba can help us with much of that. And I focus very much on the uh, organizing committees and the business of putting the games on. But actually, we plan to use the Alibaba Cloud not just for that, but also in supporting the operations of the IOC. So we have an ongoing need to engage either um, you know, with, uh, with National Olympic committees, with other organizations. We have an ongoing need to engage, as I mentioned, using the Olympic Channel. And there is a big opportunity um, for Alibaba to support us in those things. And in fact, the three areas that Alibaba are working on us about are the cloud computing infrastructure that I've already outlined, around helping us with a global e-commerce platform so that we can uh, reach across the world in the way we can't at the moment, and particularly supporting the Olympic Channel development um, not least here in China. So, for all those things, the Alibaba, I believe, is going to play a key role in supporting the entire Olympic movement going forward. And hopefully, and the plan is, we will build something that will change the Olympic model for future generations. That's really what we're all about. We're not about just replicating where we are today. We're about leveraging technology to move the Olympic into a different place. But also, it's an opportunity, I think, for both Alibaba and China to reach out into the world because the Olympics is such a huge global stage. It's also a delight to us, I think, to be coming back to China for the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. So that works, I think, extremely well in terms of our relationship ongoing. So in summary, we have a 12-year deal with Alibaba. That's a good long time and time to get a lot of things done. We have two great organizations coming together. The synergy between those two organizations in terms of end result should and will be, I predict, huge. And the thing I'm most interested in, of course, is leveraging modern technology to drive the Olympic experience forward. The partnership is powered by the sharing of the Olympic values. We're all interested in excellence, respect, and friendship. The common desire to change, the role of China in the world, our attitude to social responsibility, these are all the things that are going to make this partnership work and deliver the value that's intended. So, in conclusion, I, and I think we all at the IOC, are hugely excited to be working with Alibaba 
going forward. Thank you.